Welcome to Morningside Uniting Church Sunday online service. Every time we worship and praise the name of the Lord, we always light this candle to acknowledge Jesus Christ, the eternal light of the world, is always with us. I have two announcements to make, and the first one is we are having annual congregational meeting today to elect and re-elect uh, church leaders and also receive all the reports from the committees and then uh, small groups of the church. And then we are having Ash Wednesday service on this coming Wednesday, 22nd of February at 10 o'clock in the morning. Now let us continue to worship God. Stretch out your hands, be restored. We worship our God who calls us to renewal. Open your ears, respond to God's call. We worship our God who chooses to speak with us. Human ways of thinking cannot phantom God. No thoughts or ideas, no rules or laws can contain the eternal one. Praise be to God. Now let us pray. Almighty God, you have been the dwelling place of your people in all generations. Your mercies are more than we can number, and your compassion is without end. Grant us now the help of the Holy Spirit, that we may praise you for your goodness and mercy. Receive your word with joy and thanksgiving, and give ourselves again to you in love and service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us sing together our opening hymn, Let us sing to the God of salvation. Now let us sing together. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carrying a heavy load, and I will give you rest. Now, let us confess our sins, for the Lord is merciful and compassionate to all. Now, let us confess together. Almighty and most wonderful Father, 
We have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have left and done what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. We have followed our own ways and the desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. Yet, good Lord, have mercy on us. Restore those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant merciful Father for his sake that we may live a godly and obedient life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now hear the good news. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hear then Christ the words of grace to us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Today's Bible reading is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Now let us hear the living word of the Lord. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to uh, now read the Bible as I preach. And so now let us pray first as we prepare our hearts and minds for the living word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hunger for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, Amen. So the story begins like this. That day, we don't know when, but that day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So they were gathering around somewhere near the Sea of Galilee, and then they're trying to cross the, uh, the, uh, the lake. So leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. As I told you before, it was and still is much easier to travel uh, in a boat in, 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 in Israel in Jesus' time rather than on foot because of the uh, rocky and hilly roads conditions in Israel. And so in order for Jesus and his disciples to get to the other side or in other towns to preach the good news, it was much easier and a better idea for them to find the boat to travel. And, it, and as you can see it on the screen, that's uh, it's, uh, kind of uh, you know, black, like a half, like a kidney, been like in looking on your right hand side, that's the Sea of Galilee. And as I told you why we call it Sea of Galilee, it's a lake. Because back then, they didn't have a word for a lake. That's why they calling it Sea of Galilee. So as you can see on the screen, the Sea of Galilee is the largest freshwater lake in Israel. About 53 kilometers in perimeter and about 21 kilometers long and 13 kilometers wide, and has 
about like a total area of 166 uh, square kilometers. And the maximum depth at the deepest one is about 43 meters. So it's not deep lake, right? The lake is surrounded by the hills from east, west and south side, which is in Israel, and also north, mount, by mountains from uh, Syrian side, north, and the west side is uh, Jordan. And the water is much warmer than you think because of uh, geographical regions. It is 200 meters below sea level and surrounded by high mountains and hills and blocking any cold wind from the north and east. But when the cold wind climb over the hills and mountains, it becomes a totally different story. And so the Bible says, a furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat. So, it, so, so that it was nearly swamped. Nice and peaceful lake, Sea of Galilee, but when cold wind climb over the hills and mountains, this kind of situation happens easily. Due to its low-lying position in the valley about 200 meters below sea level, surrounded by hills from Israel side and mountains from Jordan and Syrian side. So when cold air rushing down from the higher places meets the warm air rising from the lake, the outcome is a sudden and violent storm. And this is actual photo of Sea of Galilee when the storm came. Indeed, the Galilee is prone to certain violent storms. So you know now, this is not one of storm. But it has been coming and going for years. Which means disciples, some of them were fishermen, right? They were fishing in the Sea of Galilee for their lifetime. Which means that they must have experienced this kind of stormy weather, not once, but more than, more than once. But the disciples were afraid of it, so they were looking for Jesus. And Bible continues, when they were, they were terrified, and when they were looking for Jesus, where Jesus was, he was in a stern, sleeping on a cushion. He was sleeping on a cushion. And the board became wobbly, right? Because of the you know, big waves and raising water. But he was sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Because the disciples were terrified by the storm and raging water. And I have another photo. It was taken like a early 70s. That's why it's in the black and white. Small boat was hitting, was, was hit by uh, this in you know, a big waves in Sea of Galilee. This can happen in and above the Sea of Galilee. When disciples woke him up, and Jesus got up, and the Bible says that Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. So you understand the situation, what's going on. Even though some disciples, like Peter and his brothers, they were fishermen. So they... They knew about the Sea of Galilee, what might happen when the cold wind coming from, you know, over the mountains and meets the uh, hot, you know, warm air from the lake. They knew what might happen, but they were so afraid, 
So they had to wake Jesus up because he is the Lord and Savior. Master, save us and save us. They were crying out to Jesus. And then Jesus woke up and then rebuked the wind and the waves. Be quiet and be still. Just like God made the whole universe with his own words. You know, God wasn't busybody doing something, making something out of nothing, right? He wasn't like, uh, you know, look, he wasn't looking for something to make, make, make land or like ocean, right? But he spoke with his own words. Let there be light. And there was light. Let the land divided from the water. So the ocean and the land, right? And that's how God created the whole world. And just like that, Jesus spoke to the big waves and the raging water. Quiet, be still. And as we sang, because his name, there is a power in his name. Because there is a power in Jesus Christ, in his words. And Bible continues. And this is, you know, like a... You know, like a normal day in the Sea of Galilee is very calm and very peaceful. And then Jesus told his disciples, Why are you so afraid that do you still have no faith? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this in three times. I mean third time. Some of the disciples were fishermen, so they must have known. The condition, the uh, all of the you know, southern condition of the Sea of Galilee. But they were so afraid. They were still so afraid. In our Christian life, in our faith journey, you know, certain things happen in our life over and over again. Maybe uh, for like a young family, it's like uh, paying your rent, you know, every fortnight or every month. Right? It's not easy to pay your rent, right? Or maybe you have a more huge mortgage like you know, Susan and I. But we're smiling and we're giving thanks to God all the time, right? Because you have to you know, pay your mortgage, right? And it's, it's not, it happens over and over and over again. But today's Bible says, I know it's happening over and over again, but believe that I am with you. I am in your life, and you are in me. So do not be afraid of things happening in our life. I believe Mark 5, all the terrified disciples, even though they knew and they had experience of this stormy weather in the Sea of Galilee, they were still afraid that they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were not in peace, but they were fearful. Even though they knew, even though they had experienced, and just like us, even though we know that Jesus is with us, Jesus heals us, and Jesus gives us his blessings, and Jesus makes things, you know, turn things you know, upside down, inside out, making things right for us. But when unpleasant, let me put it this way, unpleasant things happen in our life, we fear. But the Bible says, fear the Lord alone, not anything else. So Jesus said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And there is a Greek Bible here. Kai eipen hotois ti deiloi este. So Jesus told them, the second line is, certain fear. And there is a certain fear. Ti deloi. Certain fear is in you. How to exate Christian. Don't you? You do not have faith. Christian is faith, right? You do not have faith. So what the Greek Bible says is, there is a certain fear in your life, but there is no faith in your life. It's about life or death 
situation, right? Because of the raging water, and then they were about to drown. But after rebuking the the wind and the waves, and Jesus rebuking his disciples, I see there is a certain fear in your life, but there is no faith in you. So this morning, I'd like to invite all of us and encourage all of us to think about what kind of certain fear do we have in our life? What kind of certain fear do we have in our life? Maybe health related. Maybe you are diagnosed with uh, some kind of like uh, difficult to cure. You know, medical conditions, maybe, uh, you know, a diagnosis with a cancer or, or something that, you know, no one knows. And uh, you, you, you challenge like a, you know, like a, some kind of you know, financial, like, a, like how inundating circumstances, like we had last year, right? <laughs> Inside the church, we lost our one of tenants and so we lost about like 70% uh, of our monthly income since May. But we, not only did we survive, but we continued to give thanks to God and continued to trust God. Because we knew that it was God's training opportunity for us to grow in faith and also in the name of Jesus Christ. So I wonder what kind of certain fear do you carry? unnecessarily. You know what I'm talking about? Disciples were with Jesus. They saw Jesus calling out, Nazareth, Nazareth. He came out. He was dead for four days. And then they saw Jesus healing this blind man and deaf man opened his ears and began to speak properly. And, and especially uh, uh, Peter. Peter saw Jesus healing his mother-in-law, right? And they were, they were distributing this. Five loaves of bread and two fish. Feeding how many? 4,000 or 5,000? 5, Thousands of people. And Peter was, wow, you can walk on water. Let me, let me try. And he did for a while. They saw everything, but they still had a certain fear in their life, even though they were with Jesus Christ. Even though we know that Jesus is in us, He loves us and blesses us, even though we know Jesus is with us all the time, we still carry certain fears. Because we do not rely on Jesus Christ all the time, but we rely on something else. Maybe money. Once we don't have enough money, we started trembling, right? And maybe we're afraid of going to see our doctor, and when GP says, oh, I need, I'm going to send you a specialist, they, oh, oh, what's going on? Right? Certain fears we carry. But today's Bible says, forget it. I am rebuking you because you have no faith in me, but have faith. T. De Loi Esther. There is a certain fear in you. How to exact a piston, but no faith in you. In other words, as long as we have faith in Jesus Christ, there is no fear at all. Amen. As long as we journey together with Jesus Christ, there's nothing to be afraid of. So don't be like these disciples, being terrified, and they, were, they, were, they became busybody looking for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But be calm and be still as Jesus is. And the Bible continues. By the way, this is the, uh, I, when I was in the Sea of Galilee and this, we took this boat, the, the name of the boat is King David. <laughs> so we had to take it. 
<laughs> oh, King David, oh, we had to take it. And then this is, you know, someone took a, you know, video footage of the uh, boat, you know, kind of cruising. Very, peace, very peaceful and very calm. And it was one hour trip and uh, I was looking for like, where is the stand? You know, I need to sleep and <laughs> very boring trip, let me put it that way. Nothing happens and just cruising around, you know. No coffee, no food, nothing at all. <laughs> just sit there and <laughs> no entertainment, no internet, no TV, nothing at all. Just sit there in the one hour. And then the captain told us, you know what? I have experienced it so many times that when cold wind climbed over the mountains from Jordan River, this still water turned into raising water. So I do believe he's a Messianic Jew, so he believes in Jesus Christ, right? So I do believe what Jesus told his disciples, quiet, be still, don't you have faith in me? So certain fears you have in your life, Instead of looking at those, instead of being mindful of these raising waters coming to you, coming into your life, maybe you caught in this middle of this, instead of looking at them, paying attention to them, paying attention to Jesus Christ all the time. And then, the ending verse says, they were terrified. It's a different kind of fear. First, that they were terrified by the stormy weather, but this time they were terrified by Jesus and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And this is our confession that we must ask to ourselves all the time. Who is Jesus that he calms the storms in my life. So have faith in this Jesus Christ because he is with us all the time. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, God Gives Us a Future. Now let us sing together. As the people of God, go in peace. And remember, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. 
Life is stronger than death. Victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And as we do so, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now let us bless each other. God bless you. Thank you.